Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel here. Today in this video, we are going to finish the Andrew Kramer style decaying effect in HitFilm Express. All right, so if you have not seen the first two videos on this, I would encourage you to go watch those first before we continue and finish this up. Also, you might wanna take a look at the parallax effect video that I did previous to those two videos and the original Andrew Kramer decaying effect video tutorial, which all the links for all of those are in the description below. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to where I need to be to start this tutorial. This is where we left off. I'm gonna go ahead and change the graphic back to the decay, and I'm going to change the decay map back to the decaying effect here. And I'm gonna change the texture, actually I'm gonna leave the texture as the uh, stone style texture. And there, I want to also go ahead and turn back on my decay mat. Uh, or map, but I want to go ahead and tint this back to a sort of a dark red color, I think. Um, and also, I may want to make a little bit of a justification. Well, that's probably pretty good. A little bit of an adjustment, I should say, on the parallax texture amount and actually that's that's probably not too far off the mark okay so now this is going to work okay but as you can tell as i scrub through the play or the, the playhead i mean through this comp shot you can see that it is very very slow okay um so to speed things up what i am going to do is i'm going to go ahead and render this final composite shot out into its own um, transparent AVI so that I can use it for demonstrating in this tutorial. So now I have rendered out the final text decay into an uncompressed AVI with the alpha preserve so there is still the transparency. You don't have to do that again uh, but it just to speed along the process for this tutorial, that's what I have done. What I'm going to do now is I'm gonna add the, these five things to finish this project. Number one, movement of the graphic. Number two, clouds in the background. Number three, embers in the foreground. Number four, shake. And number five, volumetric light rays. So what I'm going to do, and by the way, there will be, if you, uh, watch this video and then later on you come back to it and you say I just want to watch you know number three or whatever then there will be timestamps in the description below for each of those areas so you can jump right to that part of the video okay we're going to start by creating the movement of the graphics so I'm going to right click on this and say make into a composite shot clicking OK if I was still in the original um construction project file then i would go ahead and just make a new composite shot and drag the final comp into here okay so now you can see if i play it that the decay is happening and it's nice and smooth because it's its own uh file like i said okay what i'm going to do now is it's all pre-lit everything in its in its original file so i can just do this i'm going to make this into a 3d plane and it's going to say, do you want to add a camera? And I'm going to say, of course I want to add a camera. And I'm going to go ahead and remove these crosshairs by clicking on the floor plane icon. Okay, but now if I open this up under the transform properties, you can see I have three different position controls. And I can control the Z position or Z if you are from England, right? In America, we call it the Z axis. So I'm going to bring the Z axis so that it's just behind the camera. Okay. And I'm going to go to about five frames in front of one second or about 25 frames into the project. And I'm going to go ahead and keyframe that position. I'm going to move forward five frames and then I'm going to bring it into about 300. Okay. Then I'm going to come way out here to about 325 or five frames in front of four seconds. And I'm going to change that to negative 300. Now here's a little secret. This is a little tip, quick tip. If you hit the control button and then you click on something in the 
properties, it will generally reverse the sign for you. Isn't that cool? Makes it awfully fast. Now I'm going to move forward about five frames to the four second mark. And I'm just going to reset that to say about negative 50,000 way back there. And then the whole thing will disappear at that point. So I'll just trim it in. Okay. So now if I play this, you can see it just sort of, you know, shoom in and decays and then shoom flies out. Okay. If I were to add a the motion blur, which I would want to do, uh, it's going to slow the whole thing down and it won't look as good when I um, when I do it. But if I did a RAM preview, it would look like this. And that looks pretty, pretty sweet, right? Okay, for purposes of this, I'm going to leave the RAM preview off for now just so that it uh, is a little smoother, doesn't use as much resources. So that's how you would create the movement. Now you could have it fly towards the camera if you want. You could have it fly sideways. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going back. Okay, number two, we're going to add clouds into the background. This is going to be actually very easy. I'm going to search for the storm clouds effect and I'm going to drag it underneath everything. And there they are. Now, if I open this up, I can adjust the transform, maybe scale this to 200 or something, right? And you can see that those storm clouds are back there. They look very cool. And if I do a RAM preview, now it looks like this. And you can see how those clouds are moving in the background, okay? Now, if you wanted to add some lights into this scene, then you could really dial in uh, the way those clouds look and all that kind of stuff. For this tutorial, I'm not going to worry about it, but you could definitely pull out a lot of depth out of those background clouds if you dialed in those lights just right, okay? Number three, we're going to add embers in the foreground. Now, there was a lot of embers in the original Andrew Kramer video, uh, and they look really cool. So how do we add those in here? Well, we're going to have a little bit of a problem getting them in, but guess what? We have a specific effect called the bonfire effect. And if I drag the bonfire effect in front of the decay, you can see there it is, okay? If I open this up and I open up fire and I untick the active so the fire is gone, and if I open up smoke and I untick the smoke, so the smoke is gone, then all we have left now are the embers. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the clouds in the background, and I'm going to turn off the project file for just a second. And you can see, oh, there are some embers in there, right? Okay. So now, how do we dial those in to make them look pretty cool? Well, after playing around with this for a little bit, I've decided to go ahead and transform to 0 by negative 170 by 1600 for this particular case. You know, I was bringing it closer to the camera. And then also in the embers, uh, spread of 1,000, amount of 1,000, turbulence of 50, and size back down to 20. And when I did that, I got this look here. And so if I were to turn on everything and add motion blur to the graphic, do a RAM preview, it looks like this. Yeah, and that looks pretty cool, right? Okay, number four, let's talk about adding shake. What I would suggest you do is add a new layer and on the very top add a grade layer. Now what a grade layer does is, is that anything that you do to this grade layer will affect everything that's below the grade layer, right? So all of these things will be affected the same by whatever I do to the grade layer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for the shake effect and I'm gonna drop it into the grade layer. Now I'm gonna turn off my storm clouds and my bonfire so that I only have the one thing and you can see that there's that sort of shaking effect going on, okay? If I open up the shake effect, I can make some adjustments on this. If you were to, uh, as, or I should say, as soon as you have sort of your shakedown and you feel pretty good about it, um, you might then decide to add a second shake, okay? And that second shake would be sort of for when it hits bang right there on the, you know, on the strike itself. So what I might do is add in a second shake, okay? And that second shake might be really a lot, like 200, okay? <laughs> Okay, and what I would do is, is like right before it hits, I would uh, amount zero. And then when it hits, amount 300, right? 
and then you know several frames forward back down to zero again okay that way it sort of gives the impression if i do a ram preview you'll see what i'm talking about it sort of gives the impression that that slamming in is causing the camera to shake you know violently before settling down sort of a thing so now it's kind of a right like that okay so only if you know you thought that would be cool and you really wanted to do that okay so that's how you would add that movement you just kind of tweak and play around with it until you get it all right number five and last but not least we're going to add the volumetric light rays okay and this is something that andrew kramer did that was pretty cool and i'm going to do it also okay i'm going to go ahead and turn off the the shake here so that i have a pretty smooth looking uh you know uh deal here and what i want to do is is i want to make a new plane so i'm gonna say new layer a plain layer and it can be white or i can color fill it i'm just gonna make it white makes it a lot easier okay and what i'm going to do is is i'm going to use this ellipse mask tool and i'm just going to draw a circle there okay and then i'm going to add a zoom blur effect to it and i'm going to drop it right on that plane and i'm just going to crank that up to the maximum strength okay now the zoom blur effect if i click on it and i have my um selection tool selected has this little center crosshairs here okay and if i zoom out a little bit i can go ahead and just reposition that so that it's sort of uh, you know, shining down on it. Okay. Now what I want to do, I'm going to go to the layout panel and select the lower, and then I'm just going to up the size of this so that it's big enough, right? That it covers off the top of the screen. Okay. And then I might move it down a little bit, whoops, the wrong way down a little bit so that it's sort of you know, shining across the whole thing, okay? And I might want to, you know, angle this a bit, and I even might want to move it over, okay? You know, that kind of a thing. But I just want that, you know, those volumetric light rays to kind of shine across here, okay? Um, now, if I um, think that's too much, it's too strong, I can always adjust the opacity of it a little bit, you know, so that it's somewhat subtle, right? All right. Now that I've done that, I might slide that underneath the grade. I'll re-add back in my grade, re-add back in my bonfire, re-add back in my storm clouds. And now if I do a full RAM preview, it would look like this. Yeah, very cool. So here's the deal. The deal is, is that you have all of these effects that you're sort of combining together. These are just a handful of ideas that you can play with to be able to make this happen, right? But you want to play with it and figure out other things that you might want to be able to add into your project as well. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.